Setting up and connecting a database to a Firebase Studio prototype is pretty straightforward, but there are a few things that are easier to learn from a quick tutorial like this, so you don't end up wasting time on debugging stuff that could have been avoided. Let's get started. Our initial prompt is to create a landing page for our business. And just like that, the page is ready. Now we need to set up a backend for it. Luckily, that only takes a click. Just publish the page and it'll create a Firebase backend for you. You will need a billing account. You can either create one or, if you already have a Google Cloud account like I do, you can just choose it from the pull-down menu. Then we click Publish Now. This will take around 5 minutes, so I'll pause the video and come back when it's ready. Alright, it's ready, let's take a look. Now, for a good professional code base, the backend configuration needs to be defined as environment variables, typically in a .env file. Our code base is missing it, so let us ask the AI to modify the prototype so we have that file. This way, Sensitive data is hidden in a file that will not end up in version control, and it is also a nice, standard way to define Firebase configuration. It's done. Let's check it out. In this case, the file was named .env.local, which works just as well as .env. To get the values for those environment variables, we must head over to Firebase Console at console.firebase.google.com. There we can see our brand new backend, click it, and then head to Project Settings. Here is the configuration. We just need to copy them one by one to the environment variables. The measurement ID is for Google Analytics and we do not need it for this demo. I will comment out that line using a hash symbol. Now I'll save the file and the backend is configured. Usually, it is advised to publish the prototype when you change the .env file, but our changes did not alter the backend, so we can try continuing without publishing. So, let's head back to the console and create the database. Click Cloud Firestore and there Create Database. Just give the database a name and select a location. I'll stick with the default option since the point here is to keep it simple and just get the connection working. We can start it in production mode or test mode. Test mode means your database is open to the whole world and there is a 30-day limit, after which it will start to deny queries until you change the rules. I will select the production mode so I can better show you later in the video how you can change the security rules. And there the database is ready. Notice that it does not need any configuration variables or database URLs. You just create it and you can use it. Now, what we're going to do is save the messages from the contact form to the database when the user wants to contact us from our web page. The part we want to modify is contact section. We could modify it within this prompt, but I will write it to the main prompt because then you can see the whole sentence on the screen. After typing in the values to the contact form and clicking the send button, save the values and a timestamp to the Firestore database which we created. The ID of the database is default. And it is ready. Let us refresh the page and try it out. I know it does not work yet, but you need to see the error you get at this point. Submission error. Missing or insufficient permissions. I know the reason for this, but let's ask the AI what is wrong. Just highlight the error and then right-click and click, understand this error. There is a lot of good advice on what to do. The suggested fix is to review Firestore security rules. 
That is exactly why we got the error, so let us head back to the Firebase console to look at the security rules of our database. Here's what we've got. Allow read and write if false. Now let's take a look at the docs. In the Cloud Firestore section under Secure and Validate Data, there are some helpful examples. What happens is that our current security rules deny all access, so it was supposed to not work. It is a production mode database, so that is how the configuration should be by default. If we want to allow all access, we can change the last word to true. Then there is also an example on how to allow read and write to authenticated users. I will show you that later, but let us first test that our database connection works. So, I will change this last word to be true and allow access to all. This is something you should never do because anyone can steal, modify, or delete your data unless you are setting up a public database for all the hackers to have fun. But for now, let's give it a try and send a message through the site. Message sent. Thank you for your message. Let's check the database to see what came through. It worked. We have the same data in the database. Now let's expand this a bit. I'll tell the AI to create an admin page where we can read, update, and delete messages from the database. It created a new page at slash admin slash messages. Let's see what we have. Looks nice. I'll try editing a message and check if it changes in the database. It worked. We can also modify data directly in Firestore. Let's see if it changes on the web page. That worked too. Now, in order to have a proper production mode database, we need to add authentication to our web page. Then we can set the security rules of the database so that only authenticated users can access the data. By the way, I have a full video that walks you through setting up authentication properly. It's worth watching because there's a lot more to it than just enabling a sign-in option. And now the sign-in with Google is enabled. Next, I will ask the AI to make a button for signing in. This whole process also needs publishing the app again and adding the address of the client to the authorized domains, but you will learn all that in that other video. Now we can update the Firestore rules to allow only authenticated users. I'll try sending a message without signing in first. So we get a submission error. Missing or insufficient permissions. So far, so good. And now I will sign in and let's do the same again. Message sent. Thank you for your message. Let's check the database. Everything came through just fine. Before wrapping up, let me quickly show you a couple of common rule setups you might need. If you want just the current logged in user to view, for example, their own user data, you need to define a rule that the auth is not null and UID equals the user ID. Then, if you want to have part of the data that is public for everyone, you can use the resource variable to check values in the database. For example, here I have a rule, resource.data.visibility equals public. Then, if I add a field visibility to a document, I can set that document public and everybody will see it. You can find many more security rule examples in the docs, worth browsing through them to get familiar with different scenarios. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to share the video with your fellow devs. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.